Hey there, welcome back. I hope you're doing well and I hope your year is off to a fantastic start. Today's video is a vlog of a day that I spent making a bunch of my own staples. So we've got some sourdough bagels, started a new batch of sauerkraut and made some vegan deli ham slices. I just really like making my own stuff from scratch as much as possible these days. I love being in control of what ingredients are going into my food. I like buying less single use plastic because everything at the store just comes in so much packaging. And I really like saving money. So definitely every week I make my own batch of sourdough bread, a lot of fermented vegetables, and I always make my own deli slices because I was just over buying the little packets of tofurkey that we go through in like two days. I hope you enjoy this vlog. Maybe it inspires you to try to make some of your own staples. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy. Since I had a big food prep day ahead of me, of course I had to start out by caffeinating. I showed my new espresso machine in my last vlog and I have to say, this is an investment that is already paying for itself. We make shaken espresso or oat milk lattes every day, sometimes twice a day. And right now I'm still working on dialing in my shots. There's definitely a learning curve, but it is a fun challenge. Oatly is pretty much the only milk we're currently purchasing, but it is a goal of mine this year to experiment with making my own homemade plant milk. I do have an almond cow and it's just a matter of making time to try new recipes. I haven't found one yet that steams or froths as well as store-bought plant milk, so if you have any recommendations, those would be much appreciated. While sipping on my coffee, I moved on to my next task, which is my batch of bread for the week. Most weeks, I'll just make a simple sourdough loaf. My go-to recipe for that is the tartine country bread, but sometimes I will make something fun like a batch of sourdough bagels, some white sandwich bread, focaccia. This week, I was craving bagels. I had prepared the dough and shaped the bagels the previous day and allowed them to cold ferment overnight so that I could bake and enjoy fresh bagels the next morning. To boil them, I added a few tablespoons of barley malt syrup and a tablespoon of baking soda to a pot of boiling water. I boil the bagels about one minute per side. You can do more or less depending on how chewy you like them. Lately, I just like to make plain bagels and I add everything seasoning afterwards. After spreading the cream cheese on, it just makes the cooking process a little faster and less messy than dipping all the bagels in the toppings. If you want them to get super golden brown, you can brush them with a little bit of just egg, but I usually just skip that. After boiling, the bagels get just over 20 minutes in the oven, and since I had mine spread across two trays, I just switched them halfway through the cook time so that they would bake evenly. A little bit later, I started a new batch of sauerkraut. This and kimchi are absolute staples in my house. I like to eat some kind of fermented vegetable every day, so we do go through it really quickly. And it may be a little intimidating to ferment your own veggies, but sauerkraut is actually really easy. You just need to cut up a green cabbage and you can thinly slice it by hand or use a cheese grater or a food processor with a slicing disc, or in my case, I'm using a mandolin just to speed up the process. And I find that weighing out 800 grams of cabbage makes a batch that fits perfectly inside a one quart mason jar. I add one tablespoon of salt to this and then massage it into the cabbage. And you really wanna bruise it so that it sheds a lot of water. This will serve as the brine. Now transfer it to a mason jar or really any container you like, just make sure it's clean. I have a ceramic fermentation weight I bought from Etsy that I use to weigh down the cabbage underneath the brine. The weight isn't necessary, but it is helpful. And the salt content of the brine is what will prevent any bad bacteria or mold from growing while your cabbage ferments. Sauerkraut can be ready in a week or so, but I usually like to give it a full month to ferment, and I recommend keeping it on a plate or in a dish, at least for the first few days, just in case any of the brine spills out as the mixture becomes bubbly. My last main food project for the day was to make a batch of cold cuts for Eric. I try to always have these on hand for sandwiches or just a snack on. They're really high in protein and they cost way less than buying the little packets of tofurkey. And I love the deli slice recipes from 86 Eats. She has a few different flavors and this week Eric requested the ham. So for that, I added a block of super firm tofu to my food processor, along with some tomato sauce, a little oil, liquid aminos, liquid smoke, veggie bouillon, onion powder, garlic powder, coriander, allspice, nutmeg, black pepper, nutritional yeast, smoked paprika, and some tapioca starch, and then I processed that into a paste. To that, I added my vital wheat gluten to bind all the ingredients together. 
If you're not a fan of traditional seitan, I definitely recommend trying this because the block of tofu in the recipe improves the texture and the flavor a lot. It's less dry and chewy than seitan that's made mostly of vital wheat gluten. I use the food processor to knead the dough until it comes together in more or less one large ball. Then I transferred it to a piece of foil and shaped it into a log. Typically I like to use cheesecloth and pressure cook my seitan in the instant pot just so I don't have to throw away foil, but I did use foil for this recipe so that I could apply a glaze. This is just brown sugar, dry mustard, and a little soy sauce. I make that into a paste, score the loaf, and spread the glaze over top. I bake the loaf in a baking tray that I fill up halfway with boiling water. I occasionally flip the loaf so it cooks evenly, and then for the last 15 minutes or so, I uncover it so that the glaze can caramelize a little. This is what it looks like after it has been cooked and cooled a little bit. It firms up and the texture improves a lot if you let it rest in the fridge overnight, so it's much easier to slice thinly for sandwiches that way. Sometimes when I'm meal prepping, I like to just chop up or prepare any veggies we have, so I shredded some Brussels sprouts using my food processor. Originally, I had planned to massage them with a little bit of olive oil and salt to use as the base for a salad. If you're a fan of massaged kale salads, this is a really nice alternative to mix it up. Just like with kale, massaging Brussels sprouts makes them a little less bitter, a bit more tender and easy to chew and digest so that you can use them in salads. But later that night, Eric actually ended up deciding to saute the Brussels sprouts with some white wine vinegar, some shaved almonds, and he also made a little pot of garlic mashed potatoes, and we had a packet of impossible meat sitting in our fridge, so I ended up on a whim deciding to make a vegan meatloaf. I used the recipe from Carissa's Vegan Kitchen, which I will link down below. The final recipe I wanted to share are these pecan cookie bars, and these aren't so much a staple, but they are really delicious. I got the recipe from our friend who brought them to our friend's giving. It starts with a graham cracker cookie base. Just double check that your graham crackers don't contain honey, and process them into crumbs. Then you'll melt some vegan butter in a bowl and add some brown sugar and your crumbs to form a crumbly mixture. Press that into a lined baking tray and bake for about 15 minutes. In the meantime, to make the pecan topping, melt butter in a saucepan with some turbinado sugar, add in a splash of plant milk, and a few tablespoons of maple syrup or agave. Bring that to a gentle simmer, then add in vanilla extract and pecans. And they only need to be chopped, but mine were already processed. They were left over from when I was making a lot of snowball cookies over Christmas. This mixture gets spread over the pre-baked cookie crust and baked until it's nice and bubbly. And as the bars cool, the topping firms up into this nice chewy caramel. These are seriously addictive. I love having them with my espresso in the morning. I will have the recipe linked down below. That is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. If there's any other staples that you'd like to see me make in future videos, let me know. Always love a challenge and I will see you very soon. Bye.